This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. I'm ready to start animating them. So first of all, I'll just make sure the Allison figure's legs are using IK. So I'll come down to use inverse kinematics entry here on the figure menu. And yes, the left leg and the right leg is ticked. And that's exactly what I want. So I'll come back into my document window and then I'll move the legs into position. Now I've got the ankles virtually lined up here, so what I just need to do is carefully select my body part. You can see the highlight happening there when I hover over the body parts I want to move. So I'll just carefully select the right foot here and move that into position. I'll just move it across a little bit more just to tweak it slightly and then I'll use the properties palette here to actually rotate or twist the right foot. So I'll bring that into position so. You can see now that's virtually matching up with the feet of Hazel in the video. So I'll do the same for the other foot. Just carefully drag that over, and then rotate it into position using the twist dial. So that's starting to move things into position. And I can see there that her hips are slightly off, so I'll just grab hold of the hip model here. I'll just make sure it's highlighted in red. Then I'll pull it over slightly. That's lined her up just a little bit better to begin with. So that's my first keyframe virtually. So I just need to pose the arms as well. So I'll come over to my editing tools here. I'll move the window over slightly so I can see the ones I want to use. So I'll use the rotate tool then. Bring the arm into position. And the same for the left arm. And you can see that the way that Hazel's arms are hanging there, her arms are in a slightly different position to the Allison figures. So I'll just use the twist tools to kind of duplicate that motion. That's a little bit more like it. I won't take it too far because of the way that the hands are posed. So I'll just twist that out as well. And then again, I'll use the rotate tool to bring the arms into the body slightly. So as you can see, I'm not slavishly following the video. It's just approximating really. As long as the shoulder and hip relationship is approximately the same, then hopefully your figure will just follow. Also, you can see that the Allison figure is not perfectly proportioned. Her hands are not in the same place as Hazel's. That doesn't matter, really. We just want to be able to follow the motion of the video as it progresses frame by frame. And I've deliberately chosen a video here that's virtually working on one plane so that I can use a fixed camera position to copy the movement. And there's not a lot of leg or foot motion in this animation either. It'll just be Hazel waving on the spot. So that's my first frame ready. I'll just click on Add Keyframes here to set that. And here's another little tip. At the moment, Skip Frames is selected on the animation palette here. If I play the animation now, you'll see Hazel waving in the background. But I want to be able to match Hazel's hip motions here. And that could be a little bit difficult to see where the extremes are happening at the moment. So what I'll do is stop the video for the moment. I'll change Allison into an outline view and then I'll turn off skip frames. And what you'll see will happen now is it will try to display all the frames of the video as it's playing. So if I click on play, it appears to have slowed down, but it's now showing all the frames of the video a little bit more slowly. So that's enabling me to pick out the frames I want to use for the extremes of Hazel's hip motion here. So because I'm just working in the one plane, it's going to be fairly easy to bend the parts of the body into position. So again, I'll stop the video. And if I play it again, I'll try and match the motions of the hips to start with. There's an extreme there. So if I just pull the video through, there's one extreme. If I just try and estimate that by playing the video. So I'll just wait for that to come through again. Watch the cycle a second time. There's an extreme there around about frame 30. As you can see, not a lot's happening here until about frame 20. So what I'll do is set another keyframe there just by clicking on the plus button. And all the action starts to happen after frame 20. You can see frame 21 there. Hazel's arm is just starting to move out of position. So let's come up to frame 46. That's one extreme for her hips. So what I'll do is tweak the hips of the Allison figure over. I'll just grab hold of the hip element here and pull that over and then I'll tweak it down slightly so that her legs are bending. 
Then I'll set another keyframe there. And again, I'll let the video play. And there's another extreme there happening round about frame 65, I'd say. Yes, there you go, a hips coming over there again. So what I'll do is pull the hips over and then I'll rotate them slightly on the Z plane. That's also making her legs bend slightly as well. And if I play the video again, if I just pull up to frame 80, there's another one there. So again, I'll just bring the hips over and then I'll reset the Z rotation. And then I'll rotate it slightly more that way. I'll set another keyframe and then I'll play the video again. And there's another extreme then around about frame 1 to 6. So again, I'll just grab the hips, bring them over a little bit, and then set the Z rotation the other way. And I'll set another keyframe there. Now I'll come up toward the end of the animation. And again, there's an extreme there. So I'll just pull the hips over and rotate them the other way virtually back to the middle. And then there's one more stream to check out, just as Hazel's coming to a standstill here. So I'll just bring the hips over and up slightly, and then I'll set another keyframe. So this is just animating the hip motion, really. So if I change the display back to texture shaded, I'll just bring the hips back up into position, and I'll reset that keyframe. I'll just change that to another keyframe. And if I come back to the beginning of the animation, let's see how that looks. If I just play it there. Now I'm getting some of the hip motion there. Some of it's not quite right. So I just need to adjust some of the frames again. So if I come up to about, and she's really dropped right down there. So I come up to that position. Again, bring the hips up into position and adjust the, the rotation just slightly, bring them over, set another keyframe. You can do this as you go all the way through the animation. Everything can be adjusted and keyframes can be tweaked and moved as you want to, really. So I'm just following the animation keyframe by keyframe. I'm following the video as closely as I can. This can take quite a long time to set up. So what I'll do now, I'll just pause the recording and then I'll set up the rest of the keyframes and what I think are suitable in-betweens. And then we'll start again. So that's the animation finished after about an hour of keyframing. So if I just play the animation back now, you can see that Alison is following fairly closely the motion of Hazel. And all that needs to be done now is just one or two little tweaks to the movement of the head, but that is pretty much matching the video fairly closely. So there you are, that's the way of using keyframes to match your motion capture.